coming up next, book and it reads, The Hammer of God. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Booking It. I am your humble and eloquent host, and today I'm joined by my good friend, Mr. Isaiah Redsky. How are you doing, Isaiah? I'm doing good. And by the way, if you detect a change in our voices, it's because... I was about to say that, but yes, we do. <laughs> uh, you picked that very opportune moment. So anyway, we have new microphones. Comment below if you like them better, or let us know through text or whatever way you communicate with us. Anyway, that's right. They probably do. They probably do. Anyway, we're here. Uh, we're Summer Short Story, Episode 3, talking about G.K. Chesterton. Uh, his short story in the Father Brown short story serial, The Hammer of God. So, real fast, I don't know... Did you want to? Did you have any baggage at all with Chesterton or with this story that you wanted to share? I think we'll talk a little after this about like CC short stories. Yeah. So you didn't know who G.K. Chesterton was before this? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> really, I think people really remember him nowadays as oh C.S. Lewis liked him. Like, that's kind of pretty much what he's remembered for. I mean, I think that he was, like, a Catholic, a little bit older version of C.S. Lewis in terms of, like, writing and speaking and stuff, but I don't think he's as, like, uh, the I don't think he's written as many theological works as C.S. Lewis and stuff like that. But anyway, he's pretty similar to him. And then I didn't really bring any baggage. I think I knew, like, the name but didn't know much about him. And then after I read this story, I was like, oh, this is G.K. Chesterton, the guy who C.S. Lewis liked. Kind of something like that. Um, anyway, like as I said, I think everybody knows this by now, but we had to read a lot of short stories. What was that two years ago? Uh, for our... Uh, yeah, it's fair enough, fair enough. Um, but what... This is, I think this is my favorite short stories that we did for that year. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one. That one's fun. Unfortunately, we did have to scratch that one, but maybe that'd be fun to talk about, like, behind the paywall, if you know what I mean. I think we need to need to do that. Um, yeah. Also, I want to say one more thing before we get into, like, meaty discussion. So we're planning on having, like, a 50th episode celebration. It's going to be really fun. It's going to be, like, an hour long. We're going to have uh, a bunch of fun stuff going on. We're not going to talk about a book. We're just going to talk about the podcast and... Some fun stuff like that. But, yes, that's right. Uh, well, yeah. A and then also, basically, we want you guys to submit questions. So if you're a patron, let's go ahead and, you know, message us on Patreon. But if you're not a patron, what you can do is you can either comment on one of our YouTube videos that we do every now and then, <laughs> that we try to do, um, or you can email us and i'll leave our email am i allowed to do that in the description okay yeah i'll leave that in the description and you can email us questions we really love to hear your questions just about the podcast even about us if you want we're really open so mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'm really excited for this thing it's gonna be really awesome and really fun it's gonna be called was what, what, what did i say oh yes the half centennial celebration yes it's pretty sweet uh You'll probably hear on the podcast what I propose that the podcast be called. And let me say, it's not one of my better names, but the Half Centennial Celebration is its a good name. Anyway, so let's go ahead and talk about this book. So obviously, uh, come on, it's a short story. It's a short story. Anyway, but first off, what'd you think? That's, what'd you think? Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Like a lot of, mist I don't know. A lot of mystery novels seems like it's just a big exposition dump at the end. And then you kind of have to like piece together the clues. Of this one, you're like learning with the characters, kind of about this. That's kind of fun. Hmm. Yeah, we do. 
Here we do. Here we, it literally said the very the very last line is, and I quote, Will, Wilfred Bohun carefully unlatched the wooden gate of the yard, and going up to the inspector said, I wish to give myself up. I have killed my brother. Whoa. This is interesting. Interesting, interesting. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. They both free. Well, he said that was common sense. Like, it looked like that. It's not... I don't know. But, like, what do you... So you think that that even though the last line says I wish to give myself up, I have killed my brother, you still think that he didn't commit the murder. Yeah, because he was trying to get out of murder. Yeah. <laughs> this is very interesting. You're trying to pin it on him. What about him? All right. Well, I think I. Th well, I think. No, I think that it could have because he was smart. Because it would have been if he had tried to push it, it would have been kind of obvious that he was hiding something, and they would have been like, "It's kind of suspicious," right? But if he tried to kind of you know think logically, and then you know jump on the lunatic, then it would have worked. Okay, I'll amuse the, the listeners. Um, gosh. Uh, oh, yeah. It's been a long day for me today. I've been working at Chick-fil-A all day. Uh, and today was a very long day, and I came home. And right now in my room, there's clothes on the floor, which doesn't normally happen. But, hey, it's probably good for sound quality, right? I think it's like the sound not bounces around. I don't know. But you found it? Oh, yeah. Oh, you sk Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That was a fun talk. I was kind of like, did we read the same story? But okay. That was fun. Okay. Yeah. But that is a really fun part. You know. So you said that you really liked uh, the writing style. Is there anything particular that you liked? Or you just could appreciate that it was well written? Right. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. And and it's a really good way he kind of like gets around having what's his name? Oh yeah, Wilfred. Like the the you know, the, he kinda of skips an hour and then Wilfred comes out and he doesn't really give you anything that happens in between those but it, it it's a smooth transition. It's very smooth. Um also I like to say like not very many people who, like, write very well. Like, a lot of the classics, they're written very well. Like, we did To Kill a Mockingbird. It was an extremely well-written book. 
gonna be honest, it's not really a what a page turner if you would if you would call it that, right? But what I would say is this book is really well written, but it's also a page turner, and it's not it's not just because it's a mystery novel; it's because it's like a good mystery, as well, or a short story. I didn't say novel, but you know what I mean. It's really good. I really, really the first time that I read this short story, what stood out to me was the description of the characters. And here I'm gonna I'm gonna read. They are. Uh, oh, but real fast, I want to read this funny line. So I think that Chesterton is really witty, kind of like Tolkien. And so I want to read. I want to read this quote. Uh, Colonel the Honorable Norman Bohun, his elder brother, was by no means devout, and was sitting in evening dress on the bench outside the Blue Boar, which is the inn, drinking what the philosophic observer was free to regard, either as his last glass on Tuesday or his first on Wednesday. The colonel was not particular. <laughs> like, that's just kind of, you know, it's kind of funny. Yeah, this is just kind of showing off Chesterton's, like, British wit. Like, he, like I said earlier, he and Tolkien kind of have the same thing. Where it's not like your Marvel type of funny, but it's just the really dry, witty, one-liner kind of you know humor thrown in there, which I appreciate. Like me and my dad went and saw, what's that? Oh, the new the Snake Eyes, the GI Joe movie, last night. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we saw it last night too. That's fun. Wait, wh- which which theater did you see it in? Oh, okay, okay. Oh yeah. Anyway, yeah. Well, anyway, we we went and saw it, and, like, the funniest moment in there, which is not funny at all, is when someone, like, clears their throat and says, excuse me, in, like, a scene. Like, th- th- that's the... And it's terrible. But, like, the humor is... My dad laughed once or twice in there, and I was just kind of sitting there as a critic, shaking my head sadly. Uh, and my dad was like, that's humor. Like, he does that when he laughs, and I don't. And the movie goes, that's humor, Coover. And I go, yeah, but but, like, it was... I didn't... I couldn't even, like, academically appreciate it, I just say, okay, I didn't laugh, but, like, I appreciate that. Like, I just, I appreciate this humor. You know, like, I, 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 could, I could give a dry chuckle to this. You know, like a, <laughs> you know, kind of like, like that, you know. Well, that's not saying some, that's not saying a lot then. Yeah, for sure. That's another discussion. Maybe we'll talk about it when we do. Maybe we'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway, back to Chesterton, you know? Yeah. Anyway, let me read the description now that I liked. Uh, here it is. All right. This is talking about the uh, guy who gets killed, basically. His name's Wilfred. Oh, we should probably explain what this story is. Oh, well. We'll do that. We'll do it after I read this. We'll do it after I read this. Okay. He was a tall, fine animal. Elderly, but with hair still startlingly yellow. He would have looked merely blonde and leonine, but his blue eyes were sunk so deep into his face that they looked black. They were a little too close together. He had a very long yellow mustache, on each side of them a fold or furrow from nostril to jaw, so that a sneer seemed cut into his face. Over his evening clothes he wore a curious pale yellow coat that looked more like a very light dressing gown than an overcoat, and on the back of his head was a st- stuck an extraordinary broad-brimmed hat of a bright green color. Evidently some oriental curiosity caught up at random. He was proud of appearing in such incongruous attires. Proud of the fact that he always made them look congruous. <laughs> That's kind of funny, too. His brother, the curate, also had the yellow hair and the elegance. But he was buttoned up to the chin in black. And his face was clean-shaven, cultivated, and a little nervous. He seemed to live for nothing but his religion. But there were some who said, notably the blacksmith who was a Presbyterian, that it was the love of Gothic architecture rather than of God, and that his haunting of the church like a ghost it was only another and purer turn of the almost morbid thirst for beauty, which sent his brother raging after women and wine. This charge was doubtful. While the man's practical piety was... I've always struggled with this world. In- indubitable? I don't know why anybody would ever use that word, but anyway. The man's practical piety was indubitable. Indeed, the change was mostly an ignorant misunderstanding of the love of solitude and secret prayer, and was founded on his being often found kneeling, not before the altar, but in peculiar places, in the crypts, or gallery, or even in the belfry. So sorry, that was kind of long. But what I liked about that, it is. It is, but it really digs in. Hey, it's better than Snake Eyes. But anyway, (laughs) 
well, this is a discussion for another episode. But basically what I liked about it was the fact that it really, really gives vivid imagery on what they look like and not even what they look like, but who their character is by their description. Like it said that, uh, what was the other guy's name? Um, Norman. It said that like, was it a, 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 uh, is it a smirk or a scorn or something was like cut into his face? Right, right. Like that's 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 awesome. And then the other guy said that you know he was clean shaven and he seemed like almost nervous, you know, and stuff like that. Like that's just really good. Yeah, but it's really good character development as well as good description and stuff like that. Like I think I guess Stephen King said it, but he said that everybody needs just one thing, one big description to like stick on somebody right or one main thing but chesterton is kind of weird he doesn't like he doesn't actually do that he doesn't give you like the one detail that sticks out he just gives you a lot of details but they kind of all work like at the very end my favorite line in that was when he said uh the colonel was very fond of wearing incongruent attire and it made it he think like he thought it made him look he was proud of making it look congruent or something like that right which is it's also funny but it also Elaborates more on the character as well. Anyway. Oh, yeah. You go ahead. Yep. Norman. Right. Yeah, he's very pious. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is foreshadowing. <laughs> yeah, right. It was the hammer of God. Comes out of his trance, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like it lined in steel. It was lined in steel, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, he was going to see the blacksmith's wife. Who the blacksmith is out of town. Yeah, he's walking home from something.
I think that the blacksmith tried to convince him that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Father Brown, yeah. So this is, it's just, this is like one story in like the Father Brown short story serial kind of thing. Right. Yeah. All right. So now, see, when we did uh, this short story, our curriculum gave us like this book with some like questions, some like thought deep thought questions. So Isaiah, we're gonna ask some of these, all right? Let's just pick one since we're trying to keep this short, all right? So I'm gonna ask all five of them. It's okay, I'll just ask all five of them and then you just pick your favorite. Oh, you do? Okay, well I'm gonna read them out loud anyway for the listener. Thought. Okay. Is it hard for you to watch people who seem to face no consequences for their actions? How do you respond? How do you think people want life to be fair? What do you think of the blacksmith explanation? Was it consistent with the Bible? Is it different for God to use humans to deal out judgment and for men to play God? Discuss. Yes, right. Who is the greater sinner, Norman or Wilfred? Explain. Why did Father Brown let the murderer decide his own fate? Did he know what choice the murderer would make? If so, how? What is this story's point of view? How might the story be different if... For example, it was narrated in first person. It's a tough choice. You want my opinion? Number one. So, Isaiah. Is it hard for you to watch people who seem to face no consequences for their actions? How do you respond? And why do you think people want life to be fair? Well, that's the thing. Right, right, that's the thing. Like, it says, how hard, how hard is it for you to watch people who seem to face no consequences? Like, that's the, that's the catch, is that in the end, they'll face devastating consequences. And you just kind of... Yeah. You just know they're going to come. Well, I think I think this question is actually talking about the other guy. Yeah, his brother Norman. The guy who got killed. Now he got killed. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Why don't you take this question? You can edit this out too, as like not directed about this character, just in like real life. And then maybe like relate it back to Norman if you want. AKA our sisters. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. <laughs> Sorry, all you sisters out there. We hope you're different than ours. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yes, that's probably better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I say what gets angry. No, I I agree. I agree. 
honestly, like, I get really frustrated with these kind of people. Like, these kind of people make me mad more than most, most anybody. And then, at some point, I'm just, I just feel sad for them. I'm like, someday, you're going to just get slapped in the face, metaphorically or physically. And you're not going to know what to do. Or you're going to just feel it. And, you know, and I guess that should make me, like, more sympathetic or, like, try to help them. But I don't know. It's because they're all socialists. That's why. I'm kidding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that... Yeah. I mean, we understand that, like... My dad... My, as, as my dad likes to put it... The fair only comes once a year. <laughs> That's mainly when I... When I'm... Yeah. But... Life... Like, isn't fair. So... I don't know. Get over it. But why do people... Yeah, everybody, everybody just... Everybody... Yeah. I mean, and also... I, I think that sometimes it can come out of something righteous. Like, you want to have justice. Or something like that. But it leads too far. And you're trying to make things too fair. Or something like that. I don't know. These thought questions are harder than I thought they would be. I gotta laugh. That's good. All right. Any final thoughts on the hammer of God? Let's do some donor shoutouts. All righty. I say the patron, and you say a different uh, blacksmith tool. All right. A bl- sure you do. Be creative. All right, Nana. Yes, sir. Van Pappy and Wayla. Yeah. Preach, preacher. All right. Mike and Sylvia, your grandparents. Oh, that's a good one. Your parents, Mike and Laura. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, get creative. All right, your uncle Sebi. Uh, off the a cauldron. No, it's 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 not a blacksmith tool, but it's a real thing. Um, hang on, let me get you one. Let me get one. Like those giant, the giant tongs that he uses. Remember. Alexa. For the sake of this podcast, they are. Say it. We should totally leave all of that in. That's fun. <laughs> Your aunt and uncle, Ginny and Sam. The thing about... Uh... I think it have cauldron again. Okay. Why don't you just start listing, like, I don't know, an apron? Oh yes, chisel. That's that's a good one. That's a really good one. Your cousin Moses. Yeah, there are. That's a good thing, though, right? <laughs> it's easier when we have more people on. I mean, yeah, he he uses, he uses his gloves, yeah. Uh, your cousin Zara. I can think of one more item. Cole, sure, sure, sure. Chris Agadon. I just like saying his last name. His apron. 
Isn't that such like a wow thing? Yeah, an apron. Wow. <laughs> All right, then we have Anna. <laughs> I mean, you already said silver, so might as well just keep listing off random metals. Nice. And last but not least, actually, have you have you seen this new patron yet, Emily? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, say congrats or yeah, congrats for supporting the the best podcast. Yeah. No, it's congrats because you can sleep at night now knowing that you're supporting us. No, I'm kidding. We really appreciate everybody. Mhm. Mm yeah, you do. You know what it is, but I don't know if a blacksmith uses it. Because I think it's like for melting silver and stuff. And I think that's like what a smelter does. Alright, you know what? Emily, we're not going to give you one. What? We are? I'll figure it out. Sure. Sure. What, what are you going to give her then, Isaiah? Hang on. I'm going to type this in. Sure. Hang on, I wanna see. I type this in blacksmith tools. Um Okay okay. <laughs> okay. Um Let me see here. You can edit out some of this. You can edit out, edit out some of this. Yeah, yeah, okay. True, true. Okay, so the, apparently there's one called a punch. Actually, here, here's going. A flatter and a shear. There, say it. A flatter. It's like, I guess it sounds like a kind of hammer that you kind of flatten things with. We hope you feel loved, patrons. But where can one feel such love, Isaiah? Where can one become a patron of such a great podcast? That's correct. We have all sorts of fun content. And as soon as, I guess, I guess actually I'll probably have to edit that episode now when I, the one that Tanner was going to edit. That's okay, I'll do it. We have a really fun episode about me, Tanner, and Isaiah just talking about what we read recently. If you want to get, like, bonus episodes and all that, donate $10 more. We have really fun stuff. Anyway, we'll see you next week. Hang on, what are we talking about next week? Um, oh, yeah. The Nightingale and the Rose. That'll be fun. Uh, anyway, we'll be back next week with that. Make sure to submit your questions. Um, we'll leave the email down below. Rate and review us, please. And until next time. Yes, sir.